Oh, hi. I'm really glad to be here. Um, so thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Chris Converse. I'm from Codify Design Studio. And I'm going to be spending today showing you how to do some edits inside of PDF using Acrobat. Uh, we're going to change uh, vector artwork. We're going to update and change photos. We're going to fix typos and move objects around. And so again, I really just wanted to show you some of the things you can do inside of Acrobat without having to go back to the source authoring application. Uh, during this demo, I won't be able to see the questions that you're uh, putting in. However, there are some people from Adobe who are here ready to answer some of the questions. Um, so I, while I may see one or two, I won't be able to answer everybody's question during the session. So I'm going to start by um, sharing my screen here. And so as soon as I get confirmation that that's being shared, which it is, okay, great. Um, I want to start off inside of Acrobat and just, again, show you how we can start editing some PDF files. So here I'm looking at the files in my Creative Cloud folder. I'm simply going to switch. This is the home screen inside of Acrobat DC, by the way. I'm going to switch over to the Document Cloud folder, and I'm going to come in here and open the file called iskiexperience.pdf. So inside of Acrobat, over on the right-hand side, I have a series of tools. You can edit this list of tools on the right-hand side of your screen. You can get to the tools by coming up here to the Tools panel and scrolling through and looking at all of the editing capabilities inside of Acrobat. So I'll go back to Ski Experience. So in looking at this PDF, the first thing that I need to change is the typo in the headline. So we have uh, experience misspelled here. So what I want to do is activate the edit PDF tools. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to come over here and click on edit PDF. And that's going to activate a whole series of tools across the top of my document. The first one here, edit PDF, will let me switch between text and images by simply moving my cursor inside of the document. So I can come in here and select this background image, for example, and I could move that. I'll hit undo. I can select text inside of these different text blocks or the vector artwork down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is come in here and click inside of Iski Experience. Now I do need to have the font activated in order to make this change. That's because we do need the fonts or you need licensing for the fonts in order to author new content. I am working with a Typekit font here for the headline and I do have a Creative Cloud account. So Acrobat will automatically activate that Typekit font for me. And of course you can use any uh, font on your system that Acrobat has access to. So let's come in here and make this text change. So I'll come in here and just select the E and the I, and we'll just change that to IE, and then I'll click away. So now that object has been modified inside of my PDF file. So I'm gonna come in here and zoom up a little bit. I'm gonna scroll down. I wanna make another type change here for the pre ski down here. I wanna add an accent mark to this letter E. So on the Mac, I can hold option E to activate the um, accent mark, then hold shift E and then type and get my accent mark. And you can use the same keyboard shortcut that is familiar to you on the Windows platform as well for that. So I'll click away to accept that change. Let's scroll up to the top. There's a few other changes I want to make, but I'm going to do this on mobile because I want you to see what the user experience looks like for making text changes and moving objects on the mobile platform in addition to the desktop platform here. So we're going to move this type and get rid of some of the content inside. So right now, I want to focus on this background image. So this background image is a, it's a little uh, desaturated. And so what I want to do is make some modifications to this. And we're going to do that inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to click once to select this artwork. I can zoom out here a little bit so you can see what I have selected. I'm going to right click, come down to Edit Using, and I'm going to choose Photoshop. And you can use any bitmap editing tool um, on your computer. You don't have to use Photoshop. So the first message we're going to get inside of Acrobat is this message here that tells us that Acrobat's going to try its best to take all of that pixel data and send it over to Photoshop in the most compatible way. So if there is some transparency or some special effects, there could be some things that would lose uh, or be lost in the translation over to Photoshop. But for the most part, this is going to work uh, seamlessly all the time. So let's come in here and click on Yes. Once Photoshop realizes it's getting data sent to it, Photoshop is letting us know here that if we do things like add more layers or, or use uh, layer masks or uh, smart objects, Photoshop's going to flatten the entire file back down when it sends it back to Acrobat, which is OK. So we're going to click OK here as well. So now we're looking at all of that data we got from Acrobat. Acrobat exported all of it out, put it into a temporary file, which I can see up here in the file name, and sent all that data back over to Photoshop. So inside of Photoshop, let's make some modifications here. So I have the background layer selected. I'm going to come up to the Filter menu and come down and choose Camera Raw Filter. This is one of my favorite features inside of Photoshop. I can treat this JPEG data as if it were from a, a raw camera image. 
and I'll come in here and just do a few things. Let's come in here and increase the saturation a little bit. I'm gonna increase the clarity a little bit as well. And then, we're, and then for the vibrance, I'm gonna come down here and let's just bring this up a little bit. This is really gonna bring the blues back from the sky. And I'll also come in here and increase the shadows. That's gonna give me a little bit more of the detail in the shadows of the trees here. So with those changes, I'll come in here and click OK. The Photoshop file has been modified. I'm gonna choose File Close. I'll choose Save. And then Photoshop is gonna save that data and then Acrobat's gonna go back and pick up that temporary file that it created with all of that Photoshop information. And so now we can see the changes immediately inside of Acrobat. Now in addition to just making uh, some adjustments, we can also switch out the photo completely. So let's come down here and let's change this photo for one that's a little bit closer to the image. So again, we'll come down, choose Edit Using, choose Photoshop, say so yes to Acrobat, say OK to Photoshop, and now we have this image in place here. And so what I'm gonna do is, let's go back to my desktop. I'm gonna take a picture of the lodge that's a little bit closer. We're just gonna drag this right into Photoshop. That's gonna give us a link to Smart Object. Scale this up a little bit. Move this into place, I'll zoom out. Maybe rotate this a little bit. And once I have this the way I like it, you'll notice over in the Layers panel, we now have a Smart Object and the Background Layer. So again, this is a multi-layered Photoshop file. But when I come up here and close the file and choose Save, Photoshop's gonna flatten the entire image and then send all that data back to Acrobat, which will pick it up and then modify this photograph inside of here. So now we can see those changes taking place in here as well. So let's continue on. Let's take a look at editing some vector data. So down here at the bottom, we have this artwork for this icon uh, showing up down at the bottom of the flyer. So what I wanna do here is make some changes to this vector artwork, and we're gonna use Illustrator to do that. Now the original artwork actually had the circle, the uh, cross beam here, or the, the tethering cable, and the circle as all part of the same artwork. But Acrobat understands all the different pieces here. So we can select this one piece, and I could move this around just like the other artwork if I wanted to, but it understands this one piece and will allow me to send just this artwork over to Illustrator to be modified. So let's right click, choose Edit Using. We'll come down and choose Illustrator. We'll say yes to Acrobat. And now inside of Illustrator, let's come up to the View menu. Let's choose Outline View. So I can see the artwork down here. Let's zoom up. This is actually a compound path. So I'm gonna come over here to my Direct Selection tool and I'm gonna come in here and select the points that are part of this rounded cornered rectangle. With all of these selected, I'll hold the Option key on the Mac or Alt in Windows and the Shift key. Drag this across. Then I'll come over here to my Reflection tool, which is found under the Rotation tool. Click and drag, we're gonna flip this around. And with that simple change, I'll come up here, close the Illustrator file, choose Save, and then back inside of Acrobat, we'll see the artwork modified in here as well. So again, these are some really great features inside of the desktop version of Acrobat DC for taking information in vector format or bitmap or pixel-based data and sending it over to a third-party application for modification and then sending it back into our PDF file. So with these changes, let's come up here, go to the File menu and choose Save. This is saving that back to my Document Cloud file and now let's switch over to our mobile platform. I'm gonna come over here to the iPad and let's take a look at Acrobat Mobile and look at some of the editing capabilities we have on this platform. So I'll come up here and click on Adobe Acrobat. I'm looking at my Creative Cloud file, so let's come in here and switch to Document Cloud. Again, since this is all hooked together through Document Cloud, we can see the ski experience. Let's tap on this. We should see that experience is spelled correctly. We have our Accent Mart on a pre-ski down here, and our vector artwork has our three uh, windows in the gondola. So I'm gonna come in here and pinch and zoom, move around. The last thing I wanna do here on mobile is make a text change and move this object so that the caption is lined up with the photo. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to the upper left-hand corner, click on this document icon, and come down and choose the Edit PDF icon. So the icons, look exactly the same on mobile as they do on the desktop platform. So with this in place, you'll see that we have the, all the text blocks highlighting. I can't move images around, but I can move and modify text. So I'm gonna come in here and tap on the caption here. And the first thing I'll do is click on move. This puts it into a moving state. So now if I click and drag, I can move this around. 
You'll even notice I have guides showing up to sort of help me line this up. So I'll put this right here. I'll click done. And then we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna simply tap inside and that's gonna activate the keyboard and give me the ability to make a text change. So I'm gonna click and hold and move the cursor around, get it before the word order. And then let's come in here and just get rid of the first couple words here. I wanna make sure that the caption is two lines just like all of the other captions. Now I can also change the font inside of here as well. So if I were to tap two times here and choose select all, I could come in here and change the font. So if I come in here and change this to, let's see, I'm gonna go down to Futura. We'll make this Futura bold. I could do that. And then the upper right hand corner, I'll click on the undo and just bring that back to the original font. So I'll click outside of that area and then close that up. So again, on the mobile platform, we have almost as many or almost as much capability as editing the PDF as we do in the uh, desktop version. And so I do see uh, two questions coming in that are being forwarded into me. Um, so we have Tom who's asking, uh, can I switch the font to another uh, type company? So actually I just demonstrated here uh, switching the font to Futura and that was actually a font that wasn't part of Typekit. So the answer to the question is yes, you can use any type from any foundry that you want to use. Um, anything that's available to your operating system, whether it's the mobile operating system or your desktop, you can uh, switch out those fonts using Acrobat. And then we have uh, Stephanie who's asking about, um, is there any way for Acrobat to retain the layers from Photoshop? Uh, so the answer to that right now is no. What Acrobat is doing is it takes that bitmap object in the PDF and basically can extract that out to that temporary file. So the fact that Photoshop supports things like layers and layer masks is all of the editing capabilities inside of Photoshop letting you modify that bitmap data. Now one thing I should bring up is when you extract that content from Acrobat, you could save as from Illustrator and get a new vector file or save as from Photoshop and get a brand new Photoshop file and basically use that as a way to extract all that content from inside of Acrobat. So you don't have to simply just hit save and send it back to Acrobat. Once you get uh, that artwork inside of Illustrator and Photoshop, you can then use it in any other uh, file or save it to any other destination. Um, and so with that, um, I hope you found this interesting. Um, uh, I would just encourage you to go try uh, playing around with editing PDF files and uh, look at all the amazing things you can do without having to go back to the source uh, application file. And so with that, I hope to see you at our next um, uh, streaming tutorial.